Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Yassine and this right here is the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. I've been using this thing for about two weeks and I have some thoughts, but if I had to sum it up in one sentence, I would say this thing is a must buy for most iPad users. Not all, but most. Let me explain to you guys why. So there are two sizes to the Magic Keyboard. There's the 11 inch for the 11 inch iPad and then there's the 12.9 inch. Now I've been reviewing the 12.9 inch so this is the bigger one but everything that I say could pretty much apply to both sizes. The smaller size comes in at $299 and the large one comes in at $349. And then when it comes to the actual weight you have the smaller one coming in at 600 grams and then the larger one which is the one that I have coming in at 701 grams. And the 12.9 inch iPad Pro itself is actually 641 grams. So it weighs more than the iPad itself. And then together they are roughly around 340 or 341 grams. And when you compare that to a MacBook Pro which comes in at 1290 grams, then this right here is actually not something that's more portable than a MacBook Pro. And that's the 13 inch that I'm talking about. Unless you go ahead and get the 11 inch tablet and you have the 11 inch keyboard, then you're gonna be weighing less than that MacBook Pro. Okay, so now that we got the specs and the price and stuff out of the way, let's talk about the build quality. So the build quality is actually really good. It's amazing. Like when you touch it to the hand, the materials feel really good. And the only way that I can actually describe it is that it feels almost like a leather feeling to it, the back of it and the front where your arms would rest next to the trackpad. The only downfall is that it's really hard to keep it clean. Like when oils from your hands get on the uh, armrest where the or the handrest on the sides of the trackpad, trackpad or little crumbs from maybe something that you're eating or dust particles that fly uh, maybe from next to you then it's really hard to like uh, clean it off to wipe it off and sometimes it takes uh, like a lot of force to get that to dry and to get that to clean so that is something that I noticed keeping this thing clean is a little bit tough and a little bit hard at times but overall it's got great build quality and then it's got this crazy hinge mechanism which is actually two parts so you have the bottom part which has a built-in usb uh, port and that usb port is using just to charge the ipad and then you got the top part so the bottom hinge is actually very stiff like you can't move it with one hand well maybe if you try really hard you can but it's not designed to be moved with one hand so easily. And then you got the top hinge, which is actually a little bit easier to move. And that's the part that you move back and forth. And that's what you adjust to see different viewing angles. And there are magnets in this hinge all around the top that hold the iPad in there real secure. And that's what sort of creates the levitating or the floating portion of the iPad underneath, right on top of the keys. But don't worry, those magnets do a really good job of holding the iPad in place, but you could still easily lift it off with one hand and put it back on with one hand so it's not too tight, but it's just the right amount of tightness. And then on the bottom, you have the keyboard and the trackpad. This is a great keyboard. It feels exactly like the keyboard from the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I actually do have a 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's what I've been using. And that keyboard and this keyboard feel extremely similar. The only difference that I'm noticing is that there may be a little bit less travel with these keyboard. Like this keyboard bottoms out a lot sooner than the MacBook uh, Pro's keyboard. And that's because I think it's in a chassis and it's a lot thicker than than this one so they have a little bit more wiggle room and a little bit more space to bottom out uh, with the keyboard but besides that and that's just like me trying to find a difference and nitpicking at it other than that it types fantastic it types great it's smooth and it's way better than any other keyboard case that I have tried or that Apple sold for the iPad Pros in the past and then the trackpad is smooth it's uh, got a nice finish to it it's honestly good size. I thought it was going to be too small, but it's good size. It's enough for your four fingers to do all the gestures because all the gestures are there. So you can easily do all the gestures um, like the expose, moving stuff around, opening multiple apps, all that stuff. The only thing is that it's not easy to make changes to the trackpad or the keyboard through the software. Like I wish they would added the little pull down for iOS that you can pull it down where you can change the brightness of just the regular display or the volume. I wish they would 
would have added something into there to make changes because uh, they don't have that. So in order to make these changes, then you have to go into the settings and then go into general and dig into a bunch of different stuff and then find how to change the brightness and how to change the speed of the trackpad. So besides software, I think the keyboard, you can't complain about it. There's honestly nothing bad that I could say about this keyboard and this trackpad, other than the fact that I wish that the software was optimized a little bit better so that I can make changes on the fly rather than having to dig in through settings. Okay, I lied. There is one thing that I could say about the actual keyboard that I wish that Apple did, and that is I wish that they added an escape key, like a physical escape key. I didn't know how much I used the escape key uh, coming from my MacBook Pro to this thing, and I'm getting used to not having to use it, but I really do wish that there was an escape key on this keyboard. Okay, so those were my thoughts on the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I would recommend this thing for almost all iPad users. And I said almost. Now the only group that I don't think this would really help is somebody that honestly uses the iPad for media consumption and just to play games, then you don't really need that. Or somebody that uses this thing to draw and uses the Apple Pencil all the time, then you don't really need that. Other than that, whether you're an avid iPad user or a student or somebody who takes a lot of notes, this keyboard will really help. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video and you found it informative. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. If it's your first time to my channel, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay plugged.